Hi, welcome to Pikai Pharmacy. So today we are going to learn about pellets. So pellets can be defined as small free-flowing spherical particulates manufactured by the agglomeration of fine powders or granules of drug substances and excipients using appropriate processing equipment. Pellets are substantially spherical mechanically strong agglomerates of powder particles and are prepared by specialized granulation process known as pelletization. And also to remember that pelletized product shows maximum drug absorption and pellets are less susceptible to dose dumping phenomena. And also pellets provides customized release profiles like sustained or delayed etc. Now here comes some characteristics of a pellet. So pellet possesses a uniform shape and their size ranges from 0.5 to 2 mm and pellets usually contains low porosity of about 10% and are free flowing in nature and now comes the mechanism so the mechanism of agglomerate formation and growth to a pellet is believed to occur in these three following stages one is the nucleation then comes the coalescence and layering and lastly the ball growth phase now at first comes the nucleation or nuclei formation which refers to the formation of particles from the continuous phase due to interaction within the environment in itself and smaller the particle size of nuclei better is the bonding strength. Now after formation of the nuclei comes the coalescence and layering. In coalescence the number of agglomerates that is formed during the nucleation phase decreases in number by joining and merging to form one single whole mass. So what I'm trying to say that the number of agglomerates that has been formed in the nucleation phase decreases in number. It happens by joining and merging those agglomerates into one single whole mass which has a higher weight. Now during coalescence also occurs layering. In layering number of fragments, small fragments deposits on the surface of our nuclei and it increases its size. So here comes the definition. Layering is a process which involves the successive deposition of small fragments and fines on the previously formed nucleus. Then at lastly comes the ball growth phase. In ball growth phase, abrasion causes the transfer of materials from one granule form to another and this process affects the growth of agglomerated particles. So mainly in ball growth phase, the agglomeration of particles slows down. So now let's discuss about some facts and information. So here comes first the requirement of a pellet. So a pellet must have uniform size, almost spherical in shape, for better flow properties. So as the size of a pellet becomes spherical in nature, the flow property increases as it is a rheological property. Then the pellets needs to be used as oral control release product and the pellet must disperse all along the GI tract and should exhibit prolonged GI transit time. So as we are learning about pellets, we should know about its advantages and disadvantages. So here are two advantages and two disadvantages of pellet. So the first advantage is that we can have controlled drug release profile of pellets and this happens due to ideal low surface area to volume ratio. The second is that pellet dosage forms are less susceptible to dose dumping phenomena. And the disadvantage of pellet is that it is difficult to compress pellets into tablet as they are too rigid. And pelletization demands highly sophisticated and expensive equipments. So the process of pelletization is too expensive. Now we are going to discuss the main part of this video that is the pelletization techniques. So the first technique that we are going to discuss is extrusion spironization. So in this technique the powder feed and binder solution is mixed together and this causes the formation of plasticide weight mass. Then this weight mass is allowed to fall into the screening chamber of the extruder and there are some pressure blades which provides compression to the weight mass against that screen and this causes the extruded material to discharge. Those extrudes are sent to spironizer. 
Now inside this peronizer, the pelletizer disc rotates the extrudates at very high speed to the wall of this vessel in the direction of the rotation and this causes the surface of the extruded to become very smooth and this happens due to this intense rolling action. So lastly we obtain smooth round pellets. Now with the help of this diagram you can see how these long cylindrical extruded products are spiritonized into spherical pellets. So here in this video you can see how extrusion spiritonization process actually occurs. To see the full video visit the channel Caliber Process first link in the description below. Amazing work by them. Go check them out. Now let's go to the next technique that is layering technique. So the layering technique is further divided into two types. One is the solution or suspension layering and another one is powder layering. So in this slide I tried to cover up both this layering technique in a single flow chart. So at first in suspension layering technique the suspension is sprayed on the surface of the starting spherical core which is usually is made of sugar and in powder layering technique the powdered feed is mixed with the binder solution and then it is sprayed tangentially on the surface of the starting spherical core which is also made up of sugar spear. There is one thing that I didn't mention about powder layering here is that rolling movement of the core the spherical core is done for proper distribution of the powder and to ensure spherical shape pellets. Then the point you can see that is successive layering technique. So the successive layering technique is done only for powdered layering technique. So there is one thing to note down that this particular step is only for powder layering. So here in this step successive powder layers are deposited over the spherical core with the help of bridging liquid. Now once it is over comes the drying phase. So this drying phase is common for both the layering technique. Now after completion of this drying phase, solid spherical pellets are formed. Now this picture will help you to understand this whole layering technique in a stepwise schematical way. So here it is for you. So here is our third technique that is the cryopelletization. So in cryopelletization technique the pellets are prepared by the utilization of freeze drying method. Now in this technique liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees celsius is used as a fixing medium which causes freezing of droplet of liquid formulation into solid spherical particles which are then lyophilized to provide pellets. So here is our fourth technique that is hot melt extrusion process. So in this process melted polymers along with active ingredients and additives is forced into dye cavities. Then the dyes are placed under controlled temperature pressure to form pellets. And now here is our fifth and last technique that is freeze pelletization. So in this technique a molten solid carrier in which the drug is uniformly dispersed is allowed to enter as tiny droplets into a inert column of liquid in which the molten carrier is totally immiscible. Then the droplet gets solidified into spherical pellets. Now one thing to note is that this pellet can move in either direction that is they can move upward or downward inside that liquid column and it depends upon the density of the molten solid carrier with respect to the liquid in the column. Now I want to tell all of you who are watching this video that all you can learn from here is the theoretical concept of pelletization. But actually in industries this whole process is very much complex and expensive. So you can watch this video to get an idea that how pellets are made in industries. And the link to this video is also given in the description below. Check that out. So this was all about pellets that I tried to cover up briefly in this video. So I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, bye.